guys, and welcome to episode seven of Taking Back Mondays, your positivity podcast with the legend, the fourth degree black belt, the man that Chuck Norris himself said was the future of martial arts. How you doing, Malnox? I'm doing great. Some of those things may be true. Some of those may not. I did meet Chuck Norris last year, though. Shook his hand, got a picture next to him, so that was cool. Um, but I'm doing great, man. I'm doing I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, had a uh, little bit of a a long day. Uh, didn't get as much sleep as I would have liked, and had to be at work early. But you know, that's my own damn fault. Um, Wild grind killing you. No, it wasn't even that. It was um, what was I doing last night? Oh, I was I was up editing things last night. Oh, that's right. That's and um, yeah, but then I woke up and had to go teach camp, and it was outside, and it was a little chilly today. But you know, we were chilling. We were chilling. So all in all, though, it was a good day. Better day now uh, since I've been home. So that's good that's good. How are you doing today, Sly? I'm great. Uh. We're today's gonna be this last month is gonna be a heavy conversation into this this uh talk tonight. Uh but before we get started, uh, I am it's that fly guy as Mal said. And Mal, where can they find you on the internet? You guys can find me anywhere that you might be able to find someone on the internet uh, at Mal Knox. Instagram Twitch YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, but on Twitter it's Malnox T V because someone has the tag Malnox. They tweet once a year. Give me that tag. Hashtag release the tag. But yeah, Sly, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, no hashtags needed because mm -hmm. just about anywhere you can find somebody on the internet. I am. It's that Sly guy. Uh, and you'll know because of that superhero with the dice. That's that's all you got to look for. There you go. Uh, there you go. But as you as you were talking in the little pre chat pre podcast chat session, uh, tonight we're talking about pandemic positivity. Pandemic positivity. Uh, cause guys, let me tell you, it's um. <laughs> It's 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 hard to stay positive sometimes in general, but I feel like for a lot of people, it's been hard this year with everything going on to keep a positive mindset and to uh, and to stay motivated on things. Um, uh, and you know, at, at first it was you know kind of um, nice in a sense to like you know if you were home or whatever you were working from home. I was like, oh cool, like. I have so much more time to do stuff. Like, this is kind of cool. But then, you know, as the as the days became weeks and the weeks dragged into months, it was like, okay, I'm at home. And it's not even that I'm at home. It's that if I wanted to go somewhere, I couldn't. And so it gets a little heavy right now, guys. Um, And so we just want to talk a little bit about, yeah. So we want to talk a little bit about some different things you can do to stay positive. Um during this time to stay on track with your goals and to try to help, you know, infuse some positivity into your week to, uh, uh, to, to make sure that, you know, wh while things might look down right now and things might be rough for a lot of people right now, um, you know, some, some, some different things to remember, some different things to, uh, uh, to stay, you know, to keep things in perspective, uh, and, uh, kind of, kind of going from there. But, uh, you know, I think before we get started, um, you know, Sly, how is uh, how is the pandemic so far? How's this whole stay-at-home order that's been that was going on for so long? How is it? Uh, how has it been for you? You know, how is it? Uh, what are you doing right now to stay positive? And uh, you know, because I'm sure not everything is roses and sunshine right now. What uh, what challenges have you had to uh, test your positivity these uh, past couple months? Yeah, no. Uh we we talked about personalities. I am very extroverted. I gain 
energy by being in large groups of people mm. or in groups of people. Uh, the pandemic's been miserable. I haven't, outside of going to the store or like to the doctor's office with one of my parents, mm -hmm. I don't think I've actually left my house in a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, like as somebody who's struggled with depression for a you know large portion of their life, like that's rough. Uh, so uh, I think the the things that I've been doing is just kind of what we've been talking about the last few weeks. Like I've you know honed in on my why, uh, and I've you know I've always tried to find out find the bright side you know mm -hmm. checks and balances uh you know there's there's a couple major things that are going wrong in my life mm -hmm. but i can come up with a number of great things going on in my life that counterbalance that right yeah uh that that side of like it doesn't matter how many negatives i can list i can come up with positives to counter it for sure and, you know sometimes you have to get Sometimes you dig dig deep and you have to pull up like I'm on this side of the grass. I had food today. I had fresh water that I was able to like those are still positives that yeah. you know that counter any kind of negative going on in my life. Exactly. Sometimes you, sometimes I have to dig that deep. And, and sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes you know, you have to you have to think like you know, I woke up this morning. I have food, I have water, I have a roof over my head. You know, those are those are those are the positive things, and some some days those might be the only positive things that are going on. But you know, it's still something to think about and try to look at. You know, in the regard of like, yes, I have so much going wrong right now, or yes, I have so much to be um, upset or resentful about in life right now. But there's always something that you can find that you know you can be uh, grateful about and something that you can be, you know, uh, a, a positive uh, aspect of something that's going on. You know, there's, there's always um, uh, something that you can, that you can kind of hone in on and, you know, hone in on that positivity, hone in on that positive feeling and emotion that's regarding, you know, that uh, one kind of bright spot and, uh, and use that to, to kind of give yourself the the motivation and you know to to try to push forward through the day um to try to be a little bit better than you were yesterday and you know it's not always the same things you know that we can improve on so like for instance if you can't you know go out somewhere then maybe you are working more on yourself right now right maybe you're working on getting to know uh you or working on improving your um, your self-awareness right now, right? Maybe you're working on, like you said, you're honing in on that why. So maybe you're, you know, you're doing some, you know, quote unquote soul searching um, uh, during this time where you have some more time at home or you have, you know, time, um, unoccupied time. You know, there's only so many times you can clean your house. There's only so many times you can like clean your windows and like scrub the inside of your windows and scrub your baseboards and all the grout in the bathroom and the caulking around the tub <laughs> and the shower. There's only so many times you can do those things before you, okay, now what? Um, for sure, though. I mean, I've been fortunate in that I had, I was home for a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, then, you know, we were, I only work with two other people and we were quarantining together um, and just doing virtual classes. So we are going into the martial arts school still um, and teaching virtually from the martial arts school up until the point where we could start having very limited numbers of people in the school, which we're doing right now. Um, so even throughout this, even when we were doing virtual classes, we would do some days from home and we would be teaching like private lessons. But then there was all still a couple of days a week and now, you know, every day of the week that we're going into the school physically which keeps that sense of routine which i think is uh i think is big is you know just some sense of normalcy 
Um, and I think it's really easy to fall out of a routine, especially right now. And so I think that is a big factor and something that can be important is to try to keep yourself in some kind of routine um, during this time, whether that's trying to keep like a consistent sleep schedule, whether that is like, you know, let's say you aren't working right now. Maybe you wake up and, you know, you need to sex, you know, you, I feel like you still need to have that schedule of like, I'm going to get up at this time. I'm going to get a shower. I'm going to like eat breakfast, whatever. I'm going to go job hunt for this amount of time, you know, set that hour for yourself. Like this time to this time, I'm going to job hunt this time. This time it's going to be for this, this time, you know, and to keep yourself on track. Um, because then it's going to stop that feeling of like days bleeding into each other and waking up and being like, Oh, what day is it today? Is it Friday? Oh no, it's like Thursday or it's like Tuesday of the next week or whatever. Like, Oh, it's August. Um, that kind of feeling, you know, having, having goals every day. Like we've talked about goal setting um, and being able to break those things down into smaller goals and having those lists to check things off. I think that's really important right now is to have that daily list of like, this is what I need to accomplish today and be able to check that off to give yourself that sense of accomplishment. Um, because otherwise, yeah, it's real easy to get down on yourself. Um, and, you know, it's real easy to, to have um, uh, COVID become, you know, an excuse. Like someone said in the chat here, it's easy to have COVID become an excuse to not do something um, that, you know, you, that might make, it might be harder because of quarantine and because of the pandemic, but it's not impossible. And so it's, it might be easy to say, well, hey, I, you know, I can't do this right now because, you know, quarantine's going on. But there's, there's ways around those things. There's ways to stay safe and to stay healthy. Um, and still accomplish the things that you need to get done. You just might need to get a little creative with some things um, or just approach things in a different way. Yeah. And I mean, a huge part of it, I mean, I think the thing that's kept me sane mm -hmm. is chat. And unfortunately, like I said, the, this last month is going to be a heavy, heavy time for this conversation because, uh, in the last month, I had the scare with my dad. Mm -hmm. I've had a wicked cough since June twenty seventh. Uh, yep. You know, my my brother's going through some stuff uh, in his marriage, and him and his kids have been uh, spending the time over at our house. You know, his kids are here every. He's here. His kids are here every other week. Uh, like there's just been a lot going on, <laughs> yeah. And like I haven't, I haven't been able to stream as consistently, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, even even if I get to game every day, I haven't been able to stream every day that I normally would. Uh, because you know, like I'm, I'm playing a game maybe during the day, but I've got three kids under the age of. 14 just running around the house being loud as hell like you know it just changes things mm -hmm. um which i think you know has been partially like to blame for this last month just being down both like for like me putting out content but also for me just being like 100 percent think uh i went from you know my job as a coach is up moving, running, playing games for eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went from that to like, what is it? What's the word? Sedentary mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like, want to take a bet on why I can't get rid of this cough? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's, <laughs> that's rough too. Cause for a lot of people, you know, um, and there's varying degrees to which this affects people, right? Some people weren't really affected at all because of the, the quarantine um, uh, as far as their lifestyle goes. You know, some people, whether it be for medical reasons or otherwise, you know, they're at home all the time. You know, they, they don't, you know, go out of the house uh, as much anyway. And so this wasn't a huge shift for them. Um, but it still has, you know, I think a lot of those mental 
repercussions of, you know, even if they're not leaving the house a lot anyway, it's the fact that you can't leave the house. And then there's people that, you know, led more active lifestyles or were out, you know, were working and now they're out of work. And that's a huge change. Or like you said, you, you had an active lifestyle, your job was very active. And now, you know, it's a big shift because, you know, like for me, I'm at work so much that a lot of the times, um, that's like my workout is being at work and, and doing mm-hmm. martial arts for, you know, eight, nine hours every day or whatever. Um, and if I didn't go into work, if I had to work from home and teach classes from home and everything, I wouldn't be moving around nearly as much and I wouldn't be able to be as active. Um, and you know, when you go from an activity level, um, a higher activity level to a lower one, you know, it definitely takes a toll on you because you get used to the endorphins that that activity releases. You get used to, you know, being up, being moving, moving around. And then to have that shift is hard um, to deal with on a, on a physical level um, as well. So, you know, a lot of, like, again, a lot of people are going through this time in different ways, emotionally, mentally, physically. And it really just depends on kind of what your lifestyle was before and um, versus kind of the change that it had. Um, how many of those ways or how severely each of those ways affect you. Some people it's more mental. Some people it's more you know, physical. Some people it's more emotional. You know, everyone's going through this together. Um, but the way we process it and the way it's hitting us uh, is in, in different ways, which means that the way that we need to, um, I guess, approach it is um, a little bit different. The way that we need to kind of look at staying positive through this and keeping things in perspective really depends on, I think those those three categories and um, uh, whether that's, you know, something that a physical aspects got you down. Well, you know, we can look at ways to still stay physically active um, throughout this. Is it easy to be physically active at home versus going out and doing stuff? No, it's really hard to motivate yourself at home sometimes because there's a lot of distractions when you're at home. That's why I think it's, it'd be so hard to work from home is because there's so many distractions at home. That's why a lot of people go to, you know, big uh, think tanks or shared workspaces where they still keep that routine of going somewhere to go to work yeah. um, to get into that mindset. So it is harder to motivate yourself when you're at home. Is it impossible? No, of course not. There's people that work out at home and things all the time. It just takes more planning and it takes, you know, it, it, I think it really helps to schedule it out like we were saying before you know, to keep yourself in that routine, to find a routine and stick to it. Because it's very easy to do things when they become routine. It's very hard to stop them when they become routine, whether that be a good habit or a bad habit. If you eat really healthy, then it's easier to eat really healthy. If you eat junk food all day, then it's really easy to eat junk food all day. If you go work out every single day and you've done that forever, it's pretty easy to keep doing that. If you don't work out every day and you've done that forever, it's pretty easy to keep doing that. You know, it's the things that we do consistently are the things that we're going to continue to do because that's easy. That's what we're used to. That's our routine. So trying to set that new routine and trying to get yourself to form new habits is not simple. Um, But I think right now, during this time where we all have a little more time at home or, you know, not everyone, but where a lot of people have a little more time at home is a time where we can work on forming new habits. And anytime's a good time to work on forming new habits, really. Um, but I think it, 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 the, the benefit of forming healthy habits is, you know, a giant, uh, shift in your, uh, mental, emotional, and your physical, uh, happiness. You know, whether that be something as simple as, all right, I'm going to get up and I'm going to shower every day instead of maybe you showered, you know, every other day or maybe you showered three times a week or whatever, you know, because sometimes, you know, you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to go shower, you know, um, but trying to make that a habit or, you know, get, just getting up on time, keeping that sleep schedule. That's a hard thing to do sometimes to maintain a sleep schedule. And to try to do that right now and, you know, to have those kind of goals. I, and I don't mean you need healthy habits like I'm going to go work out for, you know, an hour every day. Um, 
But to take yeah. like those smaller steps to build healthier habits right now, I think is is really important and can be really beneficial to your overall health. Yeah, and I mean, so we've talked about it, and we're we're kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. for this pandemic stuff right now, mm -hmm. right? You you kind of got pulled away, and then you're you're back in a very similar routine to what you had before mm -hmm. everything started, right? I mean, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little similar. different in in the sense of like, um, I'm at I'm actually working more now than I was before. You know, I'm actually working like uh, nine hour. Day. Some days is like still eight, but usually it's like nine hour days so i'm working like 45 48 hours a week where before i was working you know right around, like at or uh right around 40 um and so that's been that's been a rough adjustment as well it's just the fact that like yeah. now i have the opposite effect where i'm not home as much as i used to be before this all happened like i've gone for like with my commute to work and back i'm gone for like 11 hours a day sometimes and that sucks um yeah but yeah, I mean, yeah, we are we are at kind of opposite ends of that spectrum. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, how many times, how many times in the last two weeks have you heard me say the phrase "I got to get my sleep schedule back in order"? Four, five. In the last, how many times? How how many weeks? Like two weeks. Four, fourteen, two weeks. fourteen times, probably once a day. Once a day, at least. Like it when I talking about that routine right when i was at work uh the i i could play i could play and stream till 12 one o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. go to bed wake up at six o'clock in the morning and be fine now i set my alarm for i've set my alarm for six o'clock in the morning for the last 14 days for two weeks how many times do you think I turned that alarm off at four o'clock in the morning when I still hadn't fallen asleep? Oof. Yeah. Fourteen days. Yep. And here, here's here's the reality of the matter. Um, when did when did all of this stuff start? March. Uh, March. Right. Yep. Four or five months. Yep. Uh, so old psychology says it takes 21 days to create a habit or a routine, mm -hmm. right? New psychology says stop expecting your life to change in three weeks. It actually takes about 66 days yep. to create a routine 100%. over two months. Yep. Now, now guess what we've had? In far over two months. Yeah, we've had like... We've now created yeah. these alternate routines yeah of like now we have to come back and counter battle again yeah and it's like yeah it's not even you know just changing a small thing within your routine which is easier yeah. because like you have your routine right now let's say i want to yeah. change a piece of my routine i want to work out every day awesome I, i'll find the time to work out every day my routine continues as normal i add in this 30 minute workout boom it's one change but now, like you said, yeah, your entire days have changed now. Like our routines are flipped on their heads. They're gone. They're backwards. They're upside down. They're left. They're right. Um, so now we want to work out more. We want to get in better shape right now because we're like, oh, we got time. It's the pandemic and I'm not maybe going to work as much or I have more free time. I want to get in shape. I want to add this 30-minute workout. But... I also want to get back on my old routine. You know, I want to get back on my sleep schedule. I want to this, this, this. So now not only are you trying to add something new to your routine, but you're also trying to take this routine that you have now and shift it back to your old routine um, to try to get back to that normalcy. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that to your body, what you're doing now, what we've been doing for these like four months now is like it's new normal. So you're falling out of all these old habits and you're falling into these bad habits. Maybe you picked up some good habits, but maybe you picked up some bad habits. So now not only do we have to try to add uh, beneficial habits, we also have to break all these bad habits that we've become accustomed to. Yeah. And um, so 
got a little kind of like imagery of it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm the most humble person in the world, but I don't like to toot my own horn super often. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I am a very strong, like physically strong individual. Mm -hmm. uh, like I want, one of the things I want to do is I want to start training in strongman stuff. I think that stuff could be really fun. For sure. My dad has not is retired and has been retired for like eight, nine years mm -hmm. and hasn't been super physically active outside of like doing yard work and stuff, you know, occasionally. About a year ago, we got gym memberships because he wanted to start working out again and he wanted he he worked out with me. Right now, we did leg day, and I'm on the leg press machine. Mm -hmm. And a guy of my size, who is physically stronger than most people his size, still mm -hmm. on a leg press machine, you can imagine the kind of weight I can push on a leg press. Yep. I get done with my sets. I are you know we're going set 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 rotating. Yeah yeah. I get done with my first set. I tell him, go ahead and adjust the weight. I I'll move it back when you're done. And he says, nah, I can do it. He does it fine. My dad's a str like, I get my strength from somewhere. My dad's a strong man, mm -hmm. even in at his age. He does it fine. Until we go to leave the gym and he's just gone through an entire leg workout with me and goes to step off the curb. The little, the, you know, the curb, mm -hmm. whatever curb. Mm -hmm. And face plants into the ground because his legs are now noodles yeah right like that's what we're doing to our body we're going eight years of retirement and then trying to like really quickly jump back into some where, to where somebody else is mm -hmm. right uh and like i mean it's it's rough i <laughs> from experience it's rough yeah i'm trying i've like i said i've i've set my alarm clock for 6 a.m for the last 14 days Guess what I'm gonna set my alarm clock for tonight? Six AM. It might happen, it might not. Yep. I think mean, last night I knew I was like, I gotta get up at uh seven fifteen to get to work by you know, to get up, get ready, get to work by eight twenty, pick up some stuff I had to from the school and then get to uh this camp that I was teaching by like eight forty five. Yeah. Um and so I'm sitting here, I'm like editing videos and stuff. And I had, you know, slept a decent amount on, on Sunday. We got up a little later on Sunday. We slept in and I wasn't tired. And I was like, I know I need to get up at 7.15. I should probably go to bed at like 1. 1 o'clock comes. Like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll be okay. We'll, we'll do a little more. You know, by, by 2.30, I'm like, all right, I, need, I really need to go to bed now. But I've gotten to the point where like when I need to get up early for something like that, I am just not tired at that point. And, um, you know, I'm not tired till like, 3 in the morning now. Uh, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. It keeps getting later and later because I'm not doing anything to change it um, or I'm not doing the things I need to do to change it, um, you know. And sleep, sleep schedules are hard, man, because there's, you know, you can do a hard reset people call it where you just stay up all night and then you try to stay up until the next night and then you just go to sleep you pass out and then you're back on a good sleep schedule but that doesn't work <laughs> um that doesn't work you did that last weekend yeah because then you fall asleep for too long asleep or, at noon. yep exactly and that doesn't work and and it's just once you get out of that habit it's so hard to get back into it but i think what we need to do right now <laughs> is we need to have some self-respect and what i mean by that is not what people like how people usually use self-respect with like oh have some self-respect how could you do that like that kind of self-respect what i mean is that we need to respect ourselves to the point of I mean, respect is the golden rule, right? Treat other people the way that you want to be treated. 
self-respect is the same thing. Just treat yourself the way that you want other people to treat yourself, right? Treat yourself the way people you, you want people to treat you. Treat yourself the way that you treat other people. Um, and in that regard, you know, I think that especially during this time, while it is important that we that we form these habits, while it is important that we, you know, uh, get on track in routines, because I think that really, I think having that routine really does help how, with your mental, your emotional, your physical health. I think it's also really important that we cut ourselves slack and that we don't beat ourselves up if it doesn't happen right away because it takes time. It took four months for us to get to this point of the habits that we're at now. It's not going to take two days or a week to get ourselves back on a hab- on a track that we like or back into a routine that we're comfortable with. And so we, we need to cut ourselves that slack. We need to respect ourselves to the point where if we don't do it or we mess up or something one day that we don't you know, get upset with ourselves, that we try to keep ourselves motivated and that we think, you know, if like an analogy that I like to think of and these kind are of, not really an analogy, just like a, uh, a practice is, you know, if you were to imagine someone else going through the same situation that you're going through, um, like what, what would it be a way that you could show respect to them? And then you take that and you just turn the same thing back on to yourself. I mean, if you were trying to learn something, or if someone was trying to learn something new, a new skill, whatever, and they're having trouble with it, you're not going to make fun of them. You're not going to put them down for not being able to do it right away. You're going to offer them help if they need it or help them seek out help, right? Um, if you can't help them. Same thing with yourself. If you're trying to do something new, don't make fun of yourself. Don't get down on yourself and like beat up on yourself. Seek out the help if you need it. You need to give yourself the same kind of respect that you'd give someone else in that regard so if you know if you're trying to make these habits and you're having a hard time um don't don't beat yourself up you know ask a friend to help keep you accountable right have someone there that can check in with you um i used to do this with with my friends at the gym you know like have someone that you can just text like when you're going to the gym or they can text you like, Hey, like what workout did you do today? Not as a way of being like, Oh, you suck. Just as a way of like, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to do something when you have, when you're not doing it by yourself. Right. It's easier to do something when you have someone else in there with you. Um, so I think that's a really good tactic to kind of help to build these habits and to help with this routine is that if you can have someone that can hold you accountable, um, outside of yourself, because holding yourself accountable, it's way harder than having someone else hold you accountable. Yeah, I mean, so the idea of being accountable is to be accountable to something, right? Mm -hmm. If you're holding yourself accountable, how are you accountable to something? Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, I mean, and yes, there are plenty of people who can hold themselves accountable, you know, to certain things. For sure. But at some point in time, you have to have somebody else to lean on. For sure. Uh, and like I said, I think that, uh, you know, try trying to get all the odds from the audience and the crowd. Mal does a really good job of being that refreshing source of positivity that I can I can lean on, even when I'm you know, even when I'm having months like July where I was sick or coughing the whole month and shit happened because Mal sends me a text. If not every day, every other day, just how you living? What's going on? You know, and not just text. We talk, we talk, you know, nonstop in discord and all that, but like he does, he does those things well, which gives you that. Like, you know, when it's really hard, when you have friendships like that, right? When you when we do the pot the podcast as well, like six weeks of doing the podcast, seven weeks now, uh, has been a nice. I know we've talked about it. Um, we we set out to be able to help other people, you know, and be able to be some sort of beacon of positivity or central hub where people could connect to something 
uh, deeper and grow in that aspect. Mm -hmm. But I think like we've both said it, like the podcast has helped us kind of refocus our weeks and our, you know, what we're doing. A hundred percent. So I I think those two things, like, uh, you know, one of the best ways to, to keep that positive mindset is to always be able to look to something right that Mm -hmm. is better like when you when you mess up like the positivity the optimistic says like oh yeah this sucks but i still have this Mm -hmm. and like when you have friendships like that or you know for the the podcast as well like i get to hit those moments to go man that sucks but like mal cares about enough about me to have like asked how i was doing today you know, and like that's that's a positive note that I get to push into uh, when I feel like there's, you know, negativity going on around me. Uh, and like those are huge things. Oh, for like, sure. Like I said, the the refocusing your why is huge and refocusing doesn't mean changing it. Mm-hmm. It means it means focusing. It's like um, it's like uh, sighting in a, a gun, right? Like. You, you don't necessarily change the sights on a gun. You just get the sights focused into where you're more accurate. Mm-hmm. Right? So re- refocus on your why. Use this time to to not, you know, not change your why, but z- zero in on, like, this is my why. And, like, how can I make every decision come off of that? Uh, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, you said it. You said it really well and you know your whole uh little um japanese into korean oh yeah Jun- uh, junzi yeah that that whole that whole thing is is what we're talking about tonight mm-hmm. like the the realization of like i'm trying i've set the six o'clock alarm six a.m alarm clock every day not just to turn it off at 4 a.m. when I'm not as- when I'm still not asleep yet. Yeah. But because it is an effort that's being pushed. Yeah. Uh, you know. So. Hundred uh, percent. Like, you know, you you keep pushing the little efforts until you succeed on those. Hundred percent. Then you push the bigger things. Yeah, and it's those little steps. They are the little pieces of the of the puzzle that you're that you're working on every day that add up to the greater whole right it's like when we talk about goal setting we say you know you have your large goal you need to break it down into smaller actionable steps and then you need to take those smaller steps you need to break them up into smaller parts you know my goal is this to do it i need to do a b c to complete a i need to do one two three to complete b i need to do one two three etc etc and you're breaking those up so every day we're taking a small step in some way uh, to move towards our goal, to move towards a piece of our goal, which is going to help us to achieve our overall goal, which is going to help us achieve our full goal. So especially during this time, like you said, zeroing in on that why, figuring out why you want to do something, right? Uh, figuring out what what your driving force is, Um and and really having that self awareness and really knowing knowing your why is so important because then from there your daily routine and everything else that you want to try to accomplish day to day uh becomes apparent and it 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 all feeds from that why and there's times when we don't want to do things, right? There's times when we want to put things off and we want to procrastinate. But when we know why we're doing something and we know what that end result is going to be or what we hope that end result is going to be, it makes things easier. It makes it easier to do it now. It makes it easier to, if we can't do it now or don't want to do it now, to to schedule it out, to break it down, to figure out I need to do this in order to accomplish this. And when that why is strong enough, you'll do whatever to make sure that you know, you'll, you'll push yourself, you'll motivate yourself 
to get through it. And if you won't motivate yourself, then freaking talk to Sly or I will motivate you. You know, we're, that's why we're here. You know, we're, we're here to help you guys out. Yep. So if you need that motivation, like you, uh, uh, like you, come to us, we'll help. We're here. You know, if you need motivation, we're always here to chat, you know, hop in the, hop in the Twitch chat, hop in our discords, you know, we'll be there for you guys. Um, yeah, and but yeah. real quick before we, before we wrap things up, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to throw out there, like, because, because we're talking about such low times, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're talking about trying to keep the positivity inside of a pandemic, right? Like a lot of us are at real low moments. Like I, I am at a, I'm not at my lowest moment, but I'm at a, a low moment. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's important to remember not to, not to try to compare yourself to other people. Yep. Why is Malnox doing so well during the pandemic? And like, you know, I'm going this way. You never see somebody at the top of their game look down on somebody else and say, oh, I'm so much, you know? When you're at the top of your game, mm -hmm. you're focused on your goals, your motivation, your why, all of those things, and you're pushing forward with that. It's when you're not at the top of your game that you start looking at other people and going, oh, I'm never going to be that good. Oh, why is he so much better right now than I am? Yep. Oh, we were in a we were in similar places a week ago. You know, that that stuff starts to creep in and it's an it's a huge thing. Uh especially like like I said earlier, with someone who who struggled with depression in the past and uh like it's a huge thing to realize that those are just your your insecurities yeah. building into something deeper and trying to take you into something deeper. And before we before we cut out, I, I want to just remind everybody, like, we are not medically trained therapists. Nope. We are not psychiatrists. Nope. We are two people who want to make a positive impact on the world. Yep. And we so we do what we do. If you if you're dealing with depression. If you're dealing with some of the things we talked about where, you know, you're at a low moment right now, sure, use some of the things that we've said. By all means, remember that it, you know, it takes effort. Remember to refocus on your why. Do the things we said, but also seek help mm -hmm. from someone who's trained. Yeah. Because, you know the hashtag of the podcast has always been hashtag not a doctor yeah uh, because it's true we're not we're just here to help in any way we we can uh but there's there's a time and place for you to to look out for uh for yourself in the way of looking into therapy and looking into stuff like that and uh we've talked about it the last couple of weeks like therapy can do amazing things even if you're in a great space yeah if you're in a great mental space, therapy can do an amazing thing for you. Uh, but if you're in a in a low mental space and you're you're dealing with a lot of that stuff, like it can do even more. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to hit that before because I think, uh, you know, positivity in a pandemic is hard, and I I think we we all strive to to get there, but I I think that you know. Sometimes you just need a helping hand. A hundred percent. And 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 that kind of goes back into self respect is you need to respect yourself enough to seek out help. You need to respect yourself enough to know that if you can't do it by yourself, you need to give yourself that chance and, and go find someone that can help you with it. You know? Um so yeah, one one hundred percent I agree with that and I think that's so important and I think that there's a stigma around seeking help that needs to be done away with, needs to be exterminated um, because there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking for help. There's absolutely nothing wrong with looking yourself in the mirror and having the self-awareness to say, you know what, I can't do this by myself. I need someone else to help me out with this. I need someone to help me work through this and going and doing that. Um, and sometimes that's, you know, 
the bravest thing that you can do. You know, sometimes it takes the strongest person to admit that they need help. Um, and so, yeah, guys, don't don't be afraid to do it. Um, and real fast before we wrap up, we have one question here in chat that I want to touch on. And guys, remember we are uh, uh, the the podcast is live streamed every Monday, 11 p.m. Central Time, on uh, Twitch.tv slash Malinox or Twitch.tv slash It's That Sly Guy. So uh, you guys can hop in. You can always ask questions in chat, and we'll get to them either uh, here at the end of the podcast or afterwards. We do a little after podcast show where we sit and chat a little bit, um, talk to chat, answer any questions that come up. But real fast, we had a question in chat about how to deal with procrastination. And I think that ties back into a lot of the things that we talked about today. So I just wanted to touch on that fast. Um, I think the first thing is talking about that self-respect, forgiving yourself for procrastinating in the past, you know, not beating yourself up if you do procrastinate, um, not getting upset, getting angry, or getting frustrated with yourself about times you have procrastinated in the past, because then that's going to just create that cycle of, you know, you're mad that you procrastinated, you're going to be in a negative headspace, you're not going to want to do the work that you have to do, so you're going to procrastinate, which is going to make you angry, and, you know, it's just, it's a cycle. So, you got to forgive yourself for procrastinating, um, scheduling it out, and trying to stick to that schedule, and having someone that can hold you accountable to that schedule, having a friend or someone that can, you know, hold you accountable for getting a piece of that done or getting, you know, the assignment, getting the project that you're working on um, done, having someone beyond yourself that that has a stake in what you're doing, um, I think is is huge. Um, and then, yeah, just just taking it, sectioning it out, setting the time aside uh, and saying, you know, all right, this day, you know, this time from this hour to this hour, I'm going to work on this as opposed to just saying like, all right, this week I need to do this or like, Hey, I need to do this today. You know, you're much more likely to do it. If you say, I need to do this at 2 PM today Mm -hmm. and you know, and then you're kind of mentally preparing yourself that at 2 PM, you're going to do this. Not like, I'll do it today. And then you end up like watching TV or playing games or whatever. You lose track of time. And you're like, oh, dang, I I didn't do it. I'll do it tomorrow. So having it like set out as a specific time, um, I think is really important. And then, uh, yeah, again, having someone to hold you accountable and uh, and not beating yourself up if if you do procrastinate. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think two things. Uh, both come from the musical Hamilton. Uh, I mean, actually, they they are in the music. Uh, so one, uh, we we always hear the, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything, mm-hmm. right? That's true with procrastination as well. Like if if you don't have it scheduled for a time, it just doesn't get done. Yeah. Like that that con that same concept works in procrastination as well. Uh, but also, uh, in the in the song Aaron Burr, Sir, <laughs> Alexander Hamilton goes in and he's like, I wanted to do what you did, talking about college, mm-hmm. and says, I wanted to graduate in two years and join the revolution. How'd you do it? And Aaron Burr looks over and says, well, it was my parents' dying wish, like, to see me graduate. So, like, again understanding the why of what we're doing Mm -hmm. is a huge motivating factor and i'm gonna i'm gonna say that a lot Mm -hmm. in in this podcast throughout the time because i i think honestly that's the biggest thing like overarching theme in anything that we do in life if we understand why we're doing something it becomes easier it becomes more enjoyable it becomes you know more timely it just everything changes if we truly focus on why we're doing it 100 percent. i couldn't agree more could not agree more um but yeah i mean i think that's gonna do it for us uh, it's a good wrap point for us tonight guys uh next week um i think we should i think we should talk about uh some smart goals next week yeah i'm down i think we'll talk talk about some goal oh. setting next week there's two options for next week. We have the smart goals, 
which is option A. Option B is we have a special guest that has been reached out to, but has not been able to fully give the commitment yet. So maybe but, special, maybe we'll combine A and B together. But thinks it might work. Um, but yeah, so uh, as always, guys, remember that we love you. Don't forget to love each other. After this podcast, I'm going to add something for this week. Don't forget to love yourself. And be characters that make an impact on the world around you. Because the sun will rise. And we will try again. Peace out, y'all. Bye, guys. Thank you.